So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. For newcomers and old-timers alike, the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can we prevent illness, see the signs of disease before it's too late, and care for our birds through ill health? What light does behavioral science shed on their nature, needs, and hopes? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shake. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots, let them roam around about you and share a life with them? How much freedom do you give them? What happens if you form a bond of trust with them? Watch and see what understanding their true nature can do for you. Come with us on a journey as we do more than examine a parrot's world. We live in it. Make some popcorn and bring in a few wood blocks. Let everyone have something to chew and a comfortable place to perch. Cockatoot is a presentation of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, Episode 77, An Outside Aviary. Hey Bob. Now you can tell from Bob, he's with his, with his prolapse here. He's, hi, hello Pippa. What are you doing on the ground, Pip? Try not to bang into all the tripods, okay? Hello. I know, I know, hello baby. You can tell he's uh, not doing so well. He's got some feather destructive behavior. And unfortunately, he's one of the birds that Haldol doesn't work terribly well on. They're pretty rare, but he gets terribly aggressive. Um, he'll beat his head against the cage. Um, yeah, most of these birds actually get a little more active once they get used to it, but they don't do things like that. So, so anyway, today... Yeah. Today we're doing our episode. <laughs> Today we're doing our episode in our new aviary. Uh, we're going to talk about how to set one of these things up, and it, it, it's not that easy, <laughs> you know. Um, what happened? The reason we got into this, of course, we've always wanted one, but the reason we got into this is we had one of our patrons brought up the subject Hello. and had me start looking for aviaries for cages outside cages like this we call an aviary Hello. um had me start looking because they thought that they would like to support us by giving us the money to to, to build this environment and we still have some things we're, we're getting for it. I mean, we have 
purchase up and that kind of thing. But what we are missing is we have a Boeing that we've ordered and we ordered some some um, swings and other things to go in here. But this is a good start. So what we did is first thing we had to do is to, to find one of these and A&E happens to make a large one. Uh, this is almost 10 feet long and uh, a little more than five feet wide and it's six and a half feet tall. And you'll notice that it does not have a, it does not have an entryway. It has just a door here. So if you're going to go in and out with birds that can fly, that could be a problem. So what we did is we got this plastic vinyl that, that they used in refrigerators to keep the cold air in. And uh, that way when you go out the door, the birds can't come after you. Although Peaches, who's on the ground down here. What are you doing down there, Peach? Yeah. Peach, don't start chewing on that. Don't chew on the tripods. Thank you. It's a good girl, but don't chew on the tripods. Okay. So in order to use this outside, and it's already got a little cockatoo dust on here on this door, but in order to use this outside, we had to come up with a way, and, and yeah, I just thought of using these, and this is working perfectly. So um, if you walk in the door, uh, they can't get out. They just fly right into the plastic, so. Right, Bob? And Lorelei's in here. She's our best flyer. So, uh, right, Lorelei? Baby girl. So the first thing we had to do, you have to decide when you're going to do something like that is where you're going to place it. You want to place it somewhere where it's close enough to the building. You can look out the windows and see what's going on, although we don't really intend to leave them alone out here. Um, you also have to find a good spot to mount a camera. We have a camera mounted over there, so if we aren't in, um, we can actually... I have it set up with one of the, uh, the iPhones so that I can watch what's going on out here if I have to go in for something. Right, Bob? Right, Babaloo? So, I know, Peach, I know, but that's only because you're the Peach. Why do you get purple on your tail end? How'd you do that? Oh, yeah, blueberries. Of course, that's your blueberries. So, this, why is it purple if it's supposed to be blueberries? You don't know? Well, I don't know either. Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. So the first thing is you got to decide whether you're going to, where you're going to put it. And so we found this spot. We also have an umbrella that can cover the thing for when the it's summer. On those days when it's not so hot that they can't be out, but you don't you want a spot for them to be out of the sun. So. There's a mounting over there for the umbrella. The umbrella leans over the cage. I think I have to move that closer, but that only means moving 270 pounds of stepping stones. So once you decide where you're going to put it, you have the issue of critters can, they can work their way up from under the ground and get to your birds. So you can either put in... Hi, Bob. You can either put stepping stones into the ground, or you can build a <laughs> Yes, Bob. You can build a platform. So these platforms are made out of three pieces of plywood. cut down so that you know, they're left at four feet and they're cut down to six feet wide so that, so that Bob has so the one foot Bob <laughs> he's having a grand old time I don't think they're going to hear a word of what I'm saying but that's okay as long as you're having a good time boy so anyway what we did was you know built the platforms and then used four by fours for the legs and also one in the middle because there has to, these things have to carry a lot of weight. So there's also a four by four in the middle. So, and then there's braces running all you know underneath. Uh, and you can see that from the pictures, there's braces under there. So we built these things and then we brought them over here 
And then we had to, to lay down the thin set and set ceramic tile. I'd like to do a big shout out to those people who make this video cast possible. Cockatude would not be possible without our patrons. Thank you to those of you who make one-time donations. Without these patrons giving us of their hard-earned cash, we couldn't continue doing this podcast. I'd like to urge you to please give us at least a dollar per episode. We do two episodes a month. We'd like to do more, but in order to do that, we have to have the time. And right now, I'm spending a lot of time trying to beat the bushes for the Chloe Sanctuary. It's not easy taking care of birds that are severely damaged, both emotionally and physically. So, please, I urge you, become one of our patrons. And I'm sure that Peaches would thank all of our patrons in person if she got the chance. We try to answer questions from our viewers as we can. If you are a patron, be sure to email us at patron at chloesanctuary.org and your questions will take precedence. We always put our patrons first because they put us first. My first, my first idea when I when I started thinking about building this platform was to use the vinyl tiles because that's easy, you know, like press and stick, and no, you can't do that. They do not handle UV. They just they would be destroyed within six months to a year. Uh, fortunately, the people at Home Depot were quite helpful. There was a lady there. She... Hi, Peach. Oh, what a pretty song! What a pretty song, Peaches. What a pretty song. What are you going to do? Eat my shoes? Do you want to climb up? What do you want, baby? What do you want, sweetheart? So, the ceramic tile was the only way you could really go. Um, anything else would not be UV protected. So then you have to lay the thin, thin set, and then you have to set the tiles, and then you have to go back and grout it, and then you got to seal the wood with, with I used Verathane to seal the wood. And then I used another ceiling paint on the outside. Thank you.
That paint, I did not know it. You should check this out, but if a paint requires UV to really seal it. <laughs> pip, 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 the pip, the pip. Well, you're gonna fall, pip, careful. Pip, pip, pip. Pip, 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 pip. Yeah, she's got a, she's, it's, it's mating season now, and I'm gonna have to increase her dose just a tiny bit. She's picking just a little bit here. The rest of her looks good though, doesn't it? Yeah. What are you saying, Bob? What are you doing up there, Lucy Lou? Just have to find out what's going on, huh? So, once the platform was here, then I went ahead and ordered this big cage. And it was funny because when I called the company, I, I ordered it through Walmart. And Walmart actually has a deal with Wayfair, and Wayfair is the company that's going to ship it. Sorry, 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 so, <laughs> I, I have the feeling Bob's going to be most of talking in this episode. I'm not sure that anybody's going to hear me. But anyway, um, I call them up and I ask what's going on. And they tell me, you know, when it's going to get here and all that. And, and then the first issue is what size truck. Because you're not going to get a big truck down here. And they tell me that it's already assembled, and I'm like, oh my word, I'm going to have to tear the fence down to get in here, and so I had to figure and it anyway, out. Anyway, it showed up in boxes, but it was dark at night, and the truck made it in, no problem. Um, it's more like an appliance truck. As an aside, I was in a in an English class, it was an accelerated class on, on grammar, six days, six day class cover the entire English grammar um, four hours a day and there was a lady in there as a German lady and she just kept repeating everything the instructor said the first day so about halfway through he stopped and he says excuse me I'm easily distracted and with you just repeating everything I say I'm I can't even function he said you know the smallest sound somebody walking by the door an airplane going over the head overhead That'll distract me, and I can't, I can't focus. So please don't do this. So about an hour later, there's an airplane. You could hear it off in the distance. Ah! He just, what are you crying about? And he stopped. He just flat stopped, and he he followed the sound of the airplane ah! for five minutes without saying anything. And then he just looked at the class and he went. See? Peaches, what are you crying about? Come here. No, excuse me. Come here. Come on. You don't need to be down there screaming. Come on. What are you doing? What are you crying for? Get up here. It's all right. Pip's not going to get you. I got to just sit, just sit right there. No, oh, I think I put the phone, my, my phone right in the drop zone. Let's hope it doesn't get pooped on. Um... So anyway, you know, the, the, the ceramic tile, the, the grout, I got the special grout that uh, you don't have to put a sealer on it. It has a built-in sealer. It, it really works fast, though. When you're working with that grout, you can only do about six tiles at a time. I found this out the hard way. Um, so anyway, it, it, this shows up, and then, you know, Dan and Deb, who helped me build the base, they show Hi, Bob. They came over and we put this together. It took about five hours to assemble this thing.
Now, it came with, it, it, it uses um, an Allen key, okay? It came with one short little Allen key. And fortunately, we had other Allen keys here. Um, I had a... a Babaloo! Peach, right here. Come here. Come here. We're not going to have Bob screaming the whole time. No. Okay. You're going to sit right here. Right for a little while because you won't, you won't be quiet. Okay? Hello. That's the other thing. You need to think about how much noise is it going to be for your neighbors. Now, we're on an acre and all the neighbors are far, kind of far away, but he's loud and his voice carries. So I can't let him do that. So I have to be out here with him whenever he's out here to make sure he doesn't start that repetitive screeching, right? Otherwise known as screaming. So as I say, it took about five hours to put this together and that's with our own Allen key. It's kind of funny because the instructions said that you need, all you needed was a uh, Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> well, a Phillips screwdriver was used for uh, just just the bowls. That was the only thing you used the Phillips screwdriver for. Everything else was put in with a uh, Allen wrench. Uh, now, other considerations, I had to look online and find a big umbrella that would go over this. We have an umbrella that will expand to a 10-foot diameter. Um, it's designed with a hole in the middle so that it can take up to 100 mile an hour winds. We do get some wind here, so that's a good idea. Uh, although we usually get notification that we're gonna have that issue. Now, when you're building a platform, I'm kind of jump around here, I'm sorry, but when you're building a platform, be careful that you don't put the legs all the way on the outside of, of your platforms, okay? Because if you do that and you butt them together, you're gonna end up with space, which is why you see this three-quarter PVC that's it's been glued on the ends. You're not going up there, Bob. Come here. No. Bob, come here. No. You're not going up there because you'll start screaming. No. Bob. Bob Lou. Come here. Come on. His behavior issues have been pretty bad with his prolapse. Even though his prolapse isn't so bad right now. It looks kind of messy, doesn't it? I only cleaned it this morning. I haven't cleaned it in the afternoon yet. Nope. Have I? So to build a platform like this, and this platform is actually 12 foot by um, six foot wide. So there's about an extra six inches on each side, a little less than six inches, about five inches on each side. And then on each end, there's an extra foot. And that way you can sit down when you're working on things for it. Um, it gives you a little area to work with, to step up and actually deal with the, uh, the uh, aviary without having to have a ladder. Right, Bob? Right, Bob? Right, Babaloo? You having fun up there, Lucy? Lucy's hanging on the side of the cage. I thought she'd just kind of sit down by me. That's what I get for thinking. Now, Peppa, she's going to sit right here next to me. Whoa, Pep. Right, your Pep. And Bob is just dying to get away so he can go scream. He likes being outside, though, don't you, Bob? Hmm? You like this, don't you? So if you're going to do something like this, it's important that you get together with some people and make sure you have enough support, you know, people to help you build things, and, and preferably somebody who knows what they're doing. I had to learn how to grout. I had to, and, and you know, Dan and Deb and I all had to learn how to lay thin sets that we could put down tiles, and all of that was available on YouTube. You can find on YouTube just about anything. This is a little unusual in that we're we're kind of like building a deck, okay? You're putting down plywood. This is three-quarter plywood. You're putting down plywood, and then you're putting thin set on it, and and then you're putting the tiles on top of that, and then you're grouting it. Okay. And then you're sealing the wood all the way around your platform. Um, now, uh, what you see up there, that's that's manila rope. And, hi, baby. I found a company that has manila rope. They don't add anything to it. It's just the manila rope. There's no chemicals in it. They said it was fine for birds. They sell it for birds all the time. 
I'll see if I can find the company's name and put that in the show notes. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening in every day, special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries. It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures. Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild. Special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peach's happy face. I can't remember it now because I've had this rope a long time. Lorelai, what are you doing with your foot out? What you doing, Lorelai? Yeah, we got some uh, woodpeckers up there. Got uh, these are acorn woodpeckers, and there's a lot of acorns in that in that uh, palm tree. Yeah, where are you going? Where are you going? You can go up there if you want. What are you doing, Peach? What are you doing, Peach? So, things you have to think about. What are you going to use for perches? Uh, the manila rope works great. It's something they can chew if they want to, too. You want something they can chew. It's relatively inexpensive. There's a UPS vehicle. We get UPS deliveries here all the time because we're out in the boondocks and, and there's nothing, you can't buy anything in town. I mean, I mean it's just, it's a tiny little town and the stores don't have that much, so. Yes, it's a UPS store. I know, Bob. I see him too. I see him too. Yeah, that's a UPS truck. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, mainly you're looking at location, whether you're going to put paving stones in the ground, okay, or you're going to just put concrete down. Um, whatever you do, you want something that's... You want something that you can hose off so that you don't have to get down and scrub all the time. You can just hose it. And the water from that's just going to water the plants around here, so that's fine. Um, the ceramic tiles are. Ah, Baloo. The. Um, Ceramic tiles are like a buck a piece. They're, they're not expensive. So each one of these has, let's see, uh, two, I can't even count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's 24 on each one of these. Okay. So it's $24. Here we go with the truck again. Airplane. 
planes, trucks, all kinds of fun sounds we got in here, right, Bob? So these are the. Let's talk about cost, okay? The aviary is eighteen hundred dollars delivered. Uh, to build the platform is about six hundred bucks. That's everything: wood, tiles, the grout, paint, varathane, all that kind of stuff. Um, the PVC to run across here, which you do it right, you won't have to do that because that'll actually push up against each other. Um, manila rope, about a hundred bucks for enough manila rope for the, the cage. Um, this was seventy dollars delivered. The, the the door guard, which is basically like I say, it's a refrigerator uh, guard to keep the cold air in. There is a main road out there. Uh, it's kind of fine. There is a road out there that uh, isn't traveled all that much, but I should have realized around three o'clock there starts to be a bunch of traffic going out into the Netherlands. Um, yeah, the, the, so we may have a little traffic issue here, um, but it's a good day. It's not too, not too bright. Throw the cameras off. Not too dark to make the cameras um, lose their color quality so this cage has three eighths bolts in it that hook everything together uh, they're three eighths hex head not hex heads they're three eighths bolts that have hex key holes in them so if you get this a and e cage which is the 11 let's see the 11062 cage just be aware that you're going to need a a strong Allen wrench and you would be better off if you have an Allen wrench that will go on to a socket set and but to do that you also need to have offsets okay and the reason is some of these corners are hard to get to and your Allen wrench if it's long won't fit so um, what you doing over there kid what you doing little girl Mm -hmm. You being a little girl? Okay. Now, you guys have noticed that Babalu hasn't been in our videos, but out here he does a lot better. He's only been out here one time before because I wanted to get this in. He's a flighted bird, as are most of our birds. So Lorelei flies like a bat. She's a terribly good flyer. Bob's a good flyer. Uh, Pippa's a good flyer. Sugar does a pretty good job of flying now, right? Right. And Coco, she's a good flyer, but she tries not to. So you, Coco. First time I had Coco out here, she just kind of hung on the side of the cage and looked like she was scared to death. Now she's sitting on a rope and she seems to be taking it all in. This one's doing just fine, aren't you? You're just having fun looking around. Trying to think if there's any other monetary considerations. Um, well, that's about it as far as the money goes. Um, then, of course, you need toys for it. So, about $150 in toys from our wholesale distributor. Um, not any foot toys, though, because not too many birds are going to be walking down there. They're going to be pooping down there, which is probably not, you don't want to have too many foot toys. Um, I do have some birds like peaches, which can't fly, so that small perch there, I want to get a, what I want to get is a, uh, a nice piece of manzanita, like a top section of a manzanita bush, and you know, cut off most of the branches, just leave the thicker ones so the birds can climb up on it. Uh, maybe it will go about halfway up the cage, so about three feet tall. But not too wide. I want to trim it down so that you can still get around it if you need to. And then I'm going to drill holes into it like my mother did and put in fake plants. i got to make sure that those are safe, like fake leaves, fake plants. It's just something for them to play with and chew up. And i got to make sure it's all safe, and I haven't researched that yet. I think, I think what matters the most is that you find an area that's pretty with lots of plants around it. Um, that's well guarded. This is all fenced. Uh, 
where you have access to a spot where you can put up a camera, that's that's critical. You need something to watch them. I would like it better if I had a door on this side of the building, but that's just not possible. There's no door here, so and the front door is a, about a 10-foot walk out that gate. Now, if you've got a bunch of birds outside, and they don't all get along that well, poor Bob, you poor thing, look at you, look at you, Bob, you all chewed up, you if you're going to be sitting out here and you've got birds sitting on you and you have birds that have an issue and you have trouble getting up, a super soaker would work. You know, just have a super soaker hooked up to your chair so if you have to pull it out and... Poof, something to get their attention. So when you say, you know, when you use the word N-O, they understand that you really mean it. I haven't seen any aggression in this aviary at all. They seem to be just fine. There's enough space yeah, where they can get away from each other. And I think that's part of what makes it work so well. Uh, why there's no aggression in here. And if you can get, like this is wooded, we have trees all around us and plants all around and it's a nice place for them. But yet you're still close to the building. Now another thing I did too is I've made a, it won't need it right now, but I have a, a mister over there that I built a, a PVC frame for and that will sit up on top of the cage and will sit up on top of the aviary and you hook it to the hose and it will put out a fine mist in here for those hot days so the umbrella will sit over this and then the mister will sit under that in case you're they're out here when it's in the 80s the early 80s don't want them out here when it's 85 or more are you having fun Pippa what are you doing feels like you're Flap your wings. You know, I'd like to keep my glasses. Could you let you go of that, please? Please let go. Yeah, thank you. What are you doing? Just what are you doing? Is that a slow motion dive or what? so many planes is we're, we're close to a military base uh, and so a lot of these planes are, are you know, <laughs> military planes that are going overhead hey Bob hey Bob hey Bob <laughs> so this is a great place for the birds to come out. Hi, Lorelei. And just be birds. Just hang out, goof off. And... Right? Right, guys? Huh? Let's see if I can get this camera out of here and use it as a mobile camera right now. Bob, I'm just grabbing my camera. Don't mess around. See, that's the palm tree up there, and that palm tree's got has got uh, a pair of woodpeckers, acorn woodpeckers, who load that tree up with acorns. And as you can see, oh, hi Bob. As you can see, it's kind of nice all around here. Lots of we're talking about kind of the wooded feeling, so it gives them kind of the feeling they're in the woods. But yet, we still have fencing all around, so... And as you can see, there's rock down here. So, it took a little while to get this these platforms leveled. And, uh, Babalu, we're not doing any of that. No. Took a little while to get those leveled. 
And this, and this frame, I was kind of worried about having the frame without any kind of buffer between this heavy metal, which weighs 400, over, almost 500 pounds. There's a semi. But it was no problem. It's, it handled the weight just fine. There's no buckling or anything. So uh, when you see how we designed this, uh, the end will go, we'll go through this in detail. We'll try to cover everything in detail about how we did this. But as you can see, they get to see the world as it really is. Although you don't see clouds like that in California too often. Nope. Got oak trees. There's actually a pine tree behind us. If I can catch that, turn around and catch the pine tree. Pine tree back there. That pine tree was dying. I had to pound pine tree food into the ground. I had to pine, put uh, evergreen food in the ground, pound it into the ground, and start watering that tree four times a week. That's when I learned from YouTube, of course, that uh, you need to take a piece of rebar and shove it into the ground. And if it can't go into the ground 18 inches, you don't have enough water for your pine tree. So, yeah, you agree, Pippa? You like it out here, don't you, Pep? Hello. Well, hello, Peaches. What are you doing, Peach? What are you doing, Peach? Peachy girl. The other thing I had to do was go around and spray under the leaves of the fruiting, because there's a whole bunch of fruit trees here. I had to spray under the leaves with something to kill the mosquitoes, because we get mosquitoes out here. I don't think they're going to bother the birds, but they like me, don't they? Oh, you just have to sit up here now? You just have to sit up here now? Hi, Bob. Now, Bob has been attacking uh, Peaches. And he's, instead of attacking Peaches, he's trying to do something he's not supposed to do. Interspecies. This is not right. This is not a bordello. This is an aviary, okay? It is not a bordello. So you don't need to do that out here. Okay? No, Bob. We're not doing that. No. We're not. So obviously we're up static. We have a we have a lovely aviary outside, and we've got with us today salamanders up there, cocoa, and we got sugar, and Lorelei, and Lucy, and Pippa, and Peaches, and Bob. I did not bring out. Um, Cecil and Snowball because they'll be going after all the um, the female umbrellas. Bob, Bob, this is not a bordello. You need to stop that, okay? I'm glad you're happy, but you're a little too happy. So it's a nice place to sit. You could sit out here and <clears throat> read on your Kindle or on your phone. <clears throat> Bob, we're not going to do that, please. Babaloo, wrong species. Bob, look, 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 look. We're not doing that, okay? We're not doing that. You know? You've gone from being aggressive to too friendly. I guess that's better, but that's a little too friendly, Babaloo. So from research, from researching to actually getting this pad built and the aviary set up out here uh, it was about five months. It took them three weeks to ship it here. If I'd known that, I probably would have ordered it before we finished the pad, but I wanted to make sure the pad was going to work that it would be strong enough, that there wouldn't be any problems with it.
I think the the only problem I see with this aviary is that I am tending to just want to sit here and relax. And it's hard to do a video when you want to sit and relax. Isn't it, Bob? You just want to take it easy. Bob, did you pull a feather? Did you pull a feather, Bob? Hmm? Peach. Hey, Peach. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, sitting out here, you just want to go to sleep. Which the birds would let me do. They'd probably eat the cameras, but. I shouldn't say that because they're good. If you take a nap, these birds are good. They let you take a nap. The second you wake up, though, they start tearing into everything, including you getting your attention and wanting your wanting your full attention. So there's a number of skills you need to make this work. Uh, you need to kind of know get to know how to set tile and grout. You have to have a little woodworking skill, although you can have the the, uh, the plywood pre-cut to the sizes you want, and you want them uniform, of course, each the same so that you can build each platform, keeping in mind that those platforms need to be, um, like these are six by four, so when you got one foot tiles, that works best, right? That way your one foot tiles will fit in there. The other issue is hawks, and since I'm out here, I'm not too concerned about it. The only issue with hawks is if they're hanging from the top of the cage. Um, if you get a cooper's hawk that flies over and attacks their feet, that would be a big issue. So, uh, so it's when they're climbing on the cage that you have to be most concerned. Right, Lorelai? They do make a, um, a bird netting that you can put over. Um, I've hesitated to do that because at this point I think that, that as long as I'm out here um, or if there's enough birds out here so that they can do the alert, they, they can tell when there's a hawk. They, their eyes are better than ours. Uh, these guys will see a hawk at a mile and a half up where we, we can't. Are you going to try to eat that, Lorelai? You're going to be the first one to try to eat the door material. I mean, it's pretty thick. It's not that you can't chew it, but... Right, Lorelei? No, you don't need to eat my shoes. Lorelei. You can eat my shoes. Come here, Lorelei. Come on. Come on, Lorelei. Come on. Come on. Come on, Lorelai. Come on. Come on. Lorelai, come on up. Come on, Lorelai. I don't want to put my foot out for you to step on because you'll eat my shoe. I know you. Why don't you step up onto my hand? Hi, Lorelai. My baby. Don't start the screaming, please, Bob. Whoa, where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hello? Hello? You know, Salamander, you're sitting right in front of that camera. I have a camera right where Salamander is, and it's just picking up him sitting there. What are you doing up there, Sal? Well, I see you. I see I see you. You're right over the camera. Yep, I see you, sugar. What baby? Try and eat the cameras. Uh-huh. Normally there won't be cameras in here, Bob. 
Normally there won't be cameras in here, so you won't have anything to do that with. Leave it alone, you little monster. One thing we were hoping is that Bob's attitude would get better if he was able to be outside in the aviary and he'd stop attacking the other birds. Well, that seems to be the case. Now, one of the things I did is I made sure he did not get out here first. The first time he came out, there were plenty of other birds around. And... So he came into a situation where he could not form a territory. Um, so he came into other birds' territory. So the, the trick there is to make it so that they don't walk in and think, okay, this is mine, now I get to rule the roost. And although there is no dominance, there is territoriality. So uh, I brought out Coco and three other birds. Bob. Don't start that again. Baba Lou. Bob, no! Oh, here we go again. Excuse me, Lorelei. No, you're not going to sit out here and scream. Get off, get off there if you're going to scream. Come on, I've got to hold you again. Whoops, sorry, Peach. You don't need to scream. You don't. Right, Bob? Bob a loo. Hi, Lorelei. Don't eat my shoe. I, I, I can see what you're thinking. Oh, now he's back to preening, Lorelei. That's a good thing. Good beach up here. He was aggressive with her and, and trying to hurt her, and now he's breathing her normally. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, really, I want to thank uh, the anonymous donor who gave us the money we needed to do this. And as you can see, Bob's a lot better because of it. He would not be able to be in a room full of these birds. He couldn't do it. I have him right now in a room with three other birds, and that's contentious all the time. I usually, after I've been in there with him for an hour and the other birds, I, I don't have much of a voice left. Because I'm, you know, saying, no this, no that, no this, no that, come here, leave that alone. Out here, I just have to keep him a little on the quiet side and keep him from eating the, the cameras, but... Right, Peach? Is this beautiful for the Peach? Do you see everything out there, Peach has? So if you are going to be leaving the birds outside and you're not going to be watching them all the time, um, I suggest that you have a monitor, like a separate phone that you can watch it on, or your computer or something, so you can keep an eye on them. Or if you can see them out the window. Um, the camera that we have for this actually has a microphone too, so we can hear. You know, they're loud if there's a problem, and I can tell when they're giving their, their flock call for a, a hawk and that kind of thing. So, not, I've heard that a lot. They give that for herons too. But uh, you can buy that from Amazon. Uh, I think no, I you can buy that from Home Depot. They don't have it in the stores. You have to have it shipped out, and it comes in rolls. And you could just like here, you could actually take it and attach it to the roof, and then attach it to the fence, 
and that would keep any of the uh, birds that tend to dive down the red tails or the red shoulder hawks from attacking your birds while they're in the aviary. <laughs> right, Bob? Right? Is that right, Bob? It is? Okay. So this is good. Bob is preening now. He's preening Lorelei. And Lorelei's not too fixated on eating my shoes, which is good. Oh, nice tail flash there, sugar. Nice tail flash. Pretty girl. Pretty girl. Yeah, that's a pretty girl. Pretty girl. That's a pretty peach. That's a pretty sugar bird. That's a pretty sugar bird. You big silly. So you can see how you can have a good time with your birds out in, a, in an aviary. So this can also be, this is meant to be an inside aviary. So not designed to go outside. So you need to get a huge tarp. I found a tarp that I can cover it with. And what I did is I, I tied it down to one side on each. It's tied down on, on one end of the aviary to the legs of the stand. And then it has one long rope on it. And I throw the rope over the cage, and then I pull the whole tarp over. And then I cinch the rope around the uh, tarp. So it, that's how I button it up at night when we're done playing. Right, Bob? Right, Bob? What do you think? What does Bob think? You're not going to go after my... You're not going after the cameras. You're such a little pest. Sugar the bird, 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 sugar the bird. Sugar bird. Sugar the bird. What are you guys doing? No, leave my shoe alone, you little monster. You little monster. My shoe. You just have to, oh, now you be nice. You be, no, you leave my shoe alone. Bob, you stop being snippy. You don't be nippy. It's not actually biting, but he's, he's playing his little threatening game. What are you doing, Lucy Lou? Hello, Lucy Lou. What you doing, Luce? Luce, Luce, the goose. What are you doing up there? Just looking around? Just looking around? Yeah. Pip, 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 pip. Yeah, Pip. What are you doing, Pip? Pip, pip. Pip, pip, pip. Cocoa bird. Cocoa bird.
Salamander. What you doing, Sal Salamander? Baba Louie, what are you doing? Bob? Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Get Bob's attention. Now Bob actually learned to preen from Lorelei, which is amazing that he hadn't really been learning preening before this. She taught him how to do it. I was shocked when he got aggressive to her because they had been such famous friends. It made no sense, but you know, this is when they when they get sick, they know it. I don't know. What are you doing, Bob? Preening Lorelei? And she doesn't like it when you don't do your job, which is to preen her. You're not going to eat my shoes. Right, Lorelei? Mm. Coco, what are you doing up there? What are you doing, Coco? Sugar, sugar seems comfortable. Salamander's comfortable back there. Coco is the only one that doesn't look like she's quite figured this out yet. Right? Lucy seems to be having a good time. And Pippa. Right, Pippa? We can't get a good angle on you. There we go. There's the Pip. There's the Pippa. There's the Pippa. Pippa, Pippa. Pippy, Pippy girl. Pippa, Pippa. Pippy, Pippy girl. Peaches is sitting up. Hey, hey. Oh, you saw a hawk? Yeah. That's Bob's hawk alert. That's good. That's a good alarm call, Bob. Nobody's going to miss that one. That is not screaming. That's an alarm call. And don't think they didn't all notice. Sugar noticed. She stopped screaming for a second. The rest of them were all looking up. Even the peach. Right, peach? Although, I don't know. Yeah, you can, I think we can see you in that video. Off that camera A, I think so. Right, Bob? What are you doing, Bob? What are you doing, Bob? What are you doing, Bob? That's a Lorelei. Hi, Lorelei. That's a beautiful girl. That's a beautiful girl. Baby girl. The logistics of putting cameras in here for this was. What are they going to do? Put them in, and then you know Bob's going to go for them, and Lorelei will go for the cameras. Peaches will get along the bottom of the floor. She'll get on the floor and start bumping them. Right, Bob? camera back up in here. I love 
love you too. Well, Bob, would you like to say goodbye to the people? Bob, you want to say goodbye to the people? Say goodbye to the people, Bob. They wanted to see you and they got to see you today. Yeah. So we're going to hang out in here for a while longer, but that's it for our video today. Because uh, we can only run these cameras for about an hour and 20 minutes and then we have to shut them off. Or they'll shut themselves down. So, say goodbye, Bob. Goodbye, people. Bye, people. Kisses. Aw, oh, good bird. Kisses. Aw, oh, good boy. He hasn't done kisses in a long time, so... Feel privileged. Yeah, he likes this aviary, don't you, Bob? We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. What you doing, Bob? What you doing, Bob? Bob a doo. Bob, Bob.